Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Motor. Hope you're all having a great day. Today we start this episode off with some breaking news once again. Eric Jones is out at Hendrick Motorsports and now joining him is William Byron as well out at Hendrick Motorsports after this season. He will not be returning to the 24 car next season. Byron said he is unaware of where he will be next season. This now leaves two open spots at Hendrick Motorsports. And one big rumor is Kyle Larson will be going to that team in the career mode but the other slot for sure is completely up for grabs so we're gonna have to keep an eye on what's going on with that where will Byron end up I don't know yet uh, but we're gonna have to wait and see news will come out a little bit uh, later about some plans for William Byron here in the future of the career mode where he's been struggling in the career mode it's no question about it uh, he's never been able to pick up a victory so definitely got to keep an eye on where Byron will end up uh, but it's gonna be interesting to see what happens there uh, as silly season is really starting to shake up I'm trying to get the majority of it out of the way before the regular season comes to an end now as we get going here in the Xfinity Series weekend where we went to a different track. Uh, we have obviously Kansas in the Cup Series for today's episode, but here on the Xfinity side, it was road course racing at Mid-Ohio where we had an IndyCar driver of James Hinchcliffe in the number 20 star car for Joel Gibbs Racing for us here today, so he's getting his shot at the NASCAR side of racing there as it came through turn two. He would now go around the left-hand side of the 8 car of Daniel Hemrick, and then he would also get past the 19 of the Brandon Jones driver now as it goes down the straightaway towards a very heavy braking zone. This is a really kind of tricky part of the track, trying to get your braking position correct, and I've made so many mistakes in the past in this corner. And there you see a mistake from Hinchcliffe there as he goes wide, loses a position to the 19 of Brandon Jones, and was also under attack from the 8 of Hemrick, but he would hold him off, and absolutely nothing happened uh, within the time frame of that first lap to the end of this race. So we come through to the final lap here in mid-Ohio, out of turns one, Hinchcliffe goes a little bit wide there. Allows Hemrick to close the gap just a little bit to the back of him as they go down towards turn two here on this final lap of the BL Transport 170 at Mid-Ohio. Now as he goes a little bit wide, he actually closed in on the back of the 19 though of Brandon Jones and was able to make a move up the right-hand side of him and actually pass him down this long straightaway going down towards that heavy braking zone. So Hinchcliffe moves up a position on this final lap of the race here in Mid-Ohio, but now he's got to get the braking zone right and he goes a little bit too deep into the corner and he's going to go wide there and lose the position to both Jones and now Hamrick is going to try to pass as well he stays up the left hand side of Hamrick contact made Hinchcliffe sideways as they're still going to be side by side into the right hander but Hinchcliffe sent it so deep that he stays in front of the 8 but goes wide again and allows Hamrick to get alongside but he would be able to stay ahead of Hamrick thankfully here going towards the final moments of this lap there there was contact Hamrick would go uh, sideways maybe even spinning there he would collect the car but a lot of contact for Hinchcliffe as he was now all by himself but he got very physical here on this final lap of Mid-Ohio as it comes through into the final few corners of this race now as the one of Mike Lynette trying to close the gap now coming through into the final corner. Hinchcliffe going to go wide off the course into the grass but he comes through to bring it home inside the top 10 there in front of the one car but uh, definitely a wild effort for Hinchcliffe now in his NASCAR start so P6 for him as you see Todd Gilliland would pick up the victory here in the Xfinity Series so a rookie with another win there uh, as him and Zane Smith are the two rookies this season in the Xfinity Series and both of them have been able to pick up some victories here in the series and we obviously know Zane Smith will be moving up to the Cup Series in the next season of the career mode for the brand new McLaren team that was just announced in the last episode so we come through into the Cup Series weekend for myself here in the number 20 car running the Dewalt paint scheme once again I think this car looks really good at the nighttime races and obviously Kansas being a nighttime race I wanted to make sure we run it for this one so we come through with a goal of a 31.111 and we came through running the high line through turns one and two and same for turn three as well as turn four i just felt like i could get way more speed and a better lap time running this top so we come through down the front straight away towards the trial we're coming through to the line it's going to be close to the goal we do beat the goal with a 31.014 and qualify p12 here for the digital alley uh 400 at kansas speedway so a very solid qualifying effort and now we'll check out the rest of the qualifying order where you see bubba wallace up there in p17 suarez P21, Harrison Burton, Noah Gregson, Kyle Larson down there in the mid-20s. Ryan Blaney outside of the top 30 there in qualifying, so very rough for him. Eric Jones, not very good either. He will not be returning returning to Hendrick Motorsports next season in the career mode there. As you see the top 10 and on pole, we got the 24 of William Byron, who is just brand newly announced to be out of that 24 car next season in the career mode. 
So unfortunate for Byron goes and qualifies on pole fresh off the news now as we get ready to get going here in Kansas. One of my favorite mile and a half on the schedule. I always love coming to this racetrack and just getting to run up by that outside wall as you don't get to do that very often here in this game. Uh, so when we do get that opportunity, uh, I love to obviously take advantage of it there. As you see, Bubba Wallace, Daniel Suarez uh, getting ready to take the green flag. And then we got our pole winner of William Byron now as I don't know if he'll be able to hang on for that first career win tonight, but we're obviously about to find out now as we get ready to go green from the 12th starting position here in Kansas Speedway. William Byron would love to get win number one to prove Hendrick Motorsports wrong, but the green flag is out and we are underway here from the 12th starting position. Tyler Reddick on my inside there. You see on the row behind, we got the 14 of the rookie of Chase Briscoe who has two wins this season, the 19 of our teammate of Martin Truex Jr. as well, and then you see Chase Elliott just behind as we dive down into turn one on this opening lap, closing in on the back of the 10 of Eric Almarola, who starts in P10. He had a very good car last time out in the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. He's looking to carry that momentum over into Kansas. As immediately you see, I jump up to the top lane through turn three and four now as we're going to try and take advantage and maybe get to that outside of Eric Almarola as we exit turn four, clearing the 14 of Chase Briscoe. We got to the outside of Almarola as we come through to complete the first and opening lap of this race as we go down into turn one on the outside of Matt DiBenedetto, who is now a NASCAR Cup Series winner after picking up his first career win in the last episode at Charlotte. But you see the pole sitter of William Byron already down to 8th place after just a lap and a half. So clearly not a lot of race pace in that number 24 car. He had a lot of qualifying speed. But we're going to breeze right on uh, by Byron. And he is already going to fall outside of the top 10 here in Kansas after just 2 laps after starting in the first position. So we come through now to lap 3 through uh, turn 3 and 4 to the back of the 48 now of Alex Bowman who got passed by the 8 of Tyler Reddick as we were 3 wide with Bowman and Demetri down the front straight away. So moving our way forwards pretty quickly here in Kansas. And I should mention, I forgot to actually point this out earlier in the video. We are running on 4X tire feel and wear for this episode for the first time in the NASCAR Heat 5 career mode. I saw some people mentioning I should try that. So I decided to turn it up to 4X instead of 3X for this episode. So we're going to have to make pit stops in all three stages now as we come through. Still side by side with Tyler Reddick in a nice little battle with the RCR driver who's really been turning it up lately here in the career mode. Same for Benedetto, obviously picking up that victory in the last episode. So does we actually get into the outside wall through turn three and four on lap six? It was just a matter of time, a lot earlier than I anticipated, and that completely destroys the momentum we had. And we fall down to P11 just behind our teammate of Martin Truex Jr. So we try to rally back now as we come through out of turn two on lap eight. We get back to the outside of our teammate of Truex's Brad Keselowski was currently out front at this point in the race. Now as we go into turn three, there you see Chase Elliott looking to the inside of Matt Benedetto. Obviously, Elliott just won the championship in real life, and he is yet to actually win a race in general here in the NASCAR Heat 5 career mode there as I clip the wall just a little bit down the front straightaway trying to go to the outside of Reddick as we go down into turn one Elliott has passed his Hendrick teammate of Alex Bowman right now Elliott and Bowman the only two drivers that seem to be safe at Hendrick Motorsports for next season here as we go down this back straightaway on the outside of Reddick trying to complete the pass on him and getting to the outside of Bowman as well as we dive down into turn three and then as we came through out of turn two on lap ten finally getting ourselves out towards the front of that 48 now moving up into P7 as Denny Hamlin had now taken the lead at this point as Chase Elliott he was trying to drive away with sixth place and run down those top five drivers as we clear both Bowman as well as Matt Benedetto on the exit of turn four now with less than 10 laps to go in this first and opening stage and we come through now on lap 12 the tire light has come on and then the fuel icon would come on so on lap 13 coming through turns four everybody coming into the pit lane, including myself, as we're going to close in on the back of the nine of Chase Elliott, try to get to the inside of him and make up as much ground as we can on the pit entry now. So it was a very easy call to make, but then the caution comes out while we're on the pit lane. So we just take four tires, two cans of fuel anyways, and we would stay out, uh, quote unquote, there with that yellow flag pit option. Uh, so then we actually move up into P3 for the restart because of that scenario. So now it's going to be just two laps to go here on this restart in stage one. And all of a sudden, we have an opportunity to maybe steal a stage victory from Denny Hamlin as Chase Elliott up here on the front row as well. So it's right now Joe Gibbs first and third, Hendrick Motorsports second and fourth. And we make a three wide up the inside with Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott. Now we move to the lead here in stage one with just two laps to go as we go down this back straightaway, trying to hold on for the stage victory, trying to get whatever playoff points we can get. We lead the regular season standings. We lead the playoff standings. 
and we are now continuing to just run so well. We finished in the top 10 every race so far this season, surprisingly, and now we're side by side with Hamlin, who fights back up the inside as we come through to start the final lap of this first and opening stage, trying to side draft Hamlin as much as I can as we go down into turn one, but he has so much speed in that number 11 FedEx Toyota Camry that he's going to be able to just use that bottom and just drive right on by me, and now Kurt Busch is able to get up my inside as well as we go down this back straightaway for the final time in stage one. Elliot lurking there in P4 as we dive down into turn three for the final time here in this first and opening stage, and Denny Hamlin is going to easily come through to win stage one, even after an attack from myself, and Kurt Busch is going to come through side by side to the line, and he gets us there for that second position, so we get P3 here in the first and opening stage. I guess I should have maybe just protected the bottom over Hamlin instead of trying to go where my comfort zone was up at the top, so definitely keep that in mind maybe for the second stage if we have another opportunity. Sorry guys about that one. Honestly, I thought the top was going to help me stay ahead of Denny, but uh, obviously that did not work at all. There you heard the radio transmission from myself now as we're going to get ready to go green for the second stage. Nobody coming into the pit lane, so we will restart P3 just like we did for the last restart. There you saw the top 10 order. Bubba Wallace actually up there in P6. A very solid effort. There's been a lot of speed in that 23 car lately now as stage 2 is underway here in Kansas Speedway. Denny Hamlin looking for his third win of the season as we're on the inside of Kurt Busch. Obviously, Kurt Busch, you guys know, if you've been keeping up with the career mode, he is retiring at the end of the season from the career mode along with Ryan Newman in the sixth car and Brendan gone can confirm he will be retiring as well I didn't really actually announce that but he will be gone from the career mode at the end of the season as well as that 62 car in general will be gone due to McLaren coming in and so will the 77 Spire car they will be out of the career mode at the end of the season as well and then Noah Gregson obviously is not really impacted by that he will be replacing Kurt Busch in the career mode at the end of the season as we come through to complete this first and opening lap of the second stage still up in P3 as Bowman looks to the inside of Elliott of his teammate in to turn one now is Kurt Busch and myself all the way up to this higher lane actually Kurt goes even higher than myself now as you can see though Denny Hamlin has already driven away from the field after just a lap and a half of racing here in stage two so Hamlin showing so much speed and potential right now in that 11 cars to come through closing in on the back of Kurt Busch but we come through now on lap three of stage two actually clip the outside wall but it doesn't affect us too much but Chase Elliott is able to get up the inside of myself down this front straightaway as we continue to maintain pace with Kurt Busch just behind him, utilizing that draft to my advantage with 14 laps to go in the second stage as Hamlin continues to drive away as we clip the wall again through turn one and two this time and lose a little bit more ground, but fortunately it wasn't too much of an impact, so we stay ahead of Joey Logano, who was trying to put some pressure on myself, but Kurt Busch got passed by Elliott, then actually was able to get a back up the inside of him and pass him, so now Kurt back up into second, Elliott third, and myself in the fourth position as we go into turn three. Elliott, though, fights back up the inside side of Kurt so they just kind of keep swamping positions right now for second and third and I just kind of chill here in that fourth position as we come through down this front judge and I decide to actually stay here up on the top with Kurt because I know the bottom is just not going to work for me so now we come through on lap eight and once again Elliot to the top Kurt looking to the inside of him trying to take second place back but it's not going to work that time as we get aggressive there going to the outside of the one car coming through to, to the start finish line now on lap nine of 17 here on the second stage as we're side by side into turn one trying to get up into that third position position. Elliot showing a lot of speed here in Kansas, just like he did in the last episode in the Coca-Cola 600. Elliot definitely was the favorite to win that race. He had such a fast car, was dominating the Coca-Cola 600, and lost it on the final pit stop of that race. So he's trying to get some redemption here with a potential victory tonight in Kansas, but it's pretty evident that Hamlin has a rocket machine right now in that 11 car. So we come through on the lap 10 through turn 1 and 2. Actually lost a little bit of ground to Kurt Busch, so he stays clear of myself and tries to once again put the attack on Chase Elliott, but the pit stops were coming up very shortly here in Kansas, and you can see the one car of Kurt Busch pulling way to the left. Looks like he is going to be pitting this lap as my fuel and tire light have come on through turn three and four. There you see the one car of Kurt Busch. He comes into the pit lane. A few drivers behind him join him as well, uh, but the top four right here still stay out on the track as we go into turn three now on lap 11. The next lap later, Hamlin, Elliott, myself, as well as Kevin Harvick all coming into the uh, pit lane now as we are going to be actually be able to get ahead of Chase Elliott, and Harvick even gets up the left-hand side of Elliott, so Elliott had a really poor pit entry, but this time no caution comes out while we're on the pit lane, so we put four tires on the car to Kansas Field, and we actually get clipped there by the 13 on the exit of the pit box, but fortunately no damage caused, but we actually somehow pass 
Denny Hamlin during the pit cycle. So now we're in front of him and we're probably going to cycle out as the leader right now is William Byron and Kyle Busch. They are still on the racetrack battling for the lead. So currently we are a lap down here in P3, but it will cycle out to us being the leader of this race. It's going into turn three, but behind us on the front straightaway, the 38 just completely dumped Chad Fincham, who actually had an engine failure. So the caution comes out and you see Kyle Busch and William Byron will come to the pit lane. So everybody takes the wave around so everyone will still be back on the lead lap but now Kyle Busch and William Byron will be on the front row just like the last stage we are in position to maybe steal a stage victory now as it's only going to be a one lap dash to decide the stage two victory now as we are right behind our teammate of Kyle Busch William Byron he started on pole has not had speed all day and just like I did with Hamlin we're going to force a three wide up the inside of our Joe Gibbs racing teammate now the 2015 and 19 Cup Series champion he fades down the order already as we take the lead out of turn two just in front of the nine to Chase Elliott William Byron has a run down the back stretch but not enough momentum and I learned from last time I'm going to protect to the inside into turn three and four for the final time here in the second stage. Elliott close but not enough as we exit turn four getting defensive over that nine car and we are going to come through to steal the stage two victory in Kansas to pick up yet another playoff point on the season now. So very nice to pick up that stage victory and now with that stage victory we're going to do a quick stage interview with Jay Cook. Well Gary nice stage win there. Another playoff point added to your name. How did you get to Kyle on that restart? Well, we just had a really good run going into uh, into turn one there, Jay, and I was just able to take him three wide. And I learned my lesson from the first stage when I had a chance to win that stage, and then we blew it away, so I decided to protect the bottom this time over Chase, and it worked out. So a playoff point to us, and uh, yeah, uh, we're not even going to pit here, so we're just going to stay out and uh, hopefully hold on to the lead here in the final stage. So hopefully at the end of this, I'll be talking to you in victory lane, Jay. There you heard Jay from up in the booth just for a quick interview with us after the stage two victory. So we are not coming to the pit lane here at the end of stage two. Everybody uh, up front at least stays out. Now you see Blaney on back kind of gained some positions due to some drivers coming into the pit lane. But now we are ready to get going here for the third and final stage, which is now underway here in Kansas. Can we come through to get our fourth win of the season already? That would be a huge, a huge moment for us because we obviously only had two wins last season uh, throughout the whole 36 races and we already have three at this point in the season now as we come through turn one and two trying to hold off Kyle Busch we know he's got a strong car uh, but he got put back a little bit earlier in this race Denny Hamlin clearly probably the fastest driver right now here in Kansas as we go into turn three this time I change it up and instead of running the top I go to the bottom of the track just to see what I can do and as we come through out of turn four we're going to push way up the track though and that opens the door for Kyle Busch to put on the attack and actually get to my left rear quarter panel to the inside Kyle Busch goes we lead the first lap now as we come through into to turn one but Kyle's just gonna blow right on by me and take the lead from myself here in Kansas and Denny Hamlin as well looking to the inside Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney right there behind me as they almost forced it three wide down at this back straightaway Hamlin to the inside of Kyle Busch for the lead into turn three I'm gonna stay up of course on this top lane as Kyle Busch fades down into the second position now as we exit turn four Blaney trying to move up into P4 Blaney has had a lot of speed to start the season hasn't quite uh, been able to get to victory lane now as he's had a few opportunities three wins for Blaney last season in the career mode all came in the, the first quarter of the season and he has yet to win since then as we come through turn one and two nearly getting into the outside wall there but fortunately we stay out of it as we come through now trying to hold Blaney off in that third position but we come through to lap 48 now Keselowski had moved up into fourth Blaney had faded quite significantly at this point but I did not have a whole lot of fight for Brad Kozlowski as we come through side by side down the back straight by now Kyle Busch up the inside again of Hamlin so they are not done fighting for the lead by any means yet now as we're going to unfortunately give up that third spot to Brad Kozlowski and then Chase Elliott is now trying to run us down and put the pressure on as well with just 20 laps to go now 19 laps to go here in Kansas and sure enough Elliott he gets to my left rear quarter panel as well as we exit turn four we do stay clear but he takes a shorter route through the trial to actually maintain with us now as we're side by side for P4 and to turn Turn one, Kyle Busch out front, Hamlin in second, doesn't quite seem to have his dominant of a car here in this final stage, and Keselowski is starting to get up into the mix now as we give up that fourth spot to Chase Elliott and now drift down to P5 here in Kansas. Harvick back there in the sixth position, and we also know we will have another pit stop at least coming up here relatively soon as we come through out of turn four, trying to put that attack on Elliott, but he just has so much speed in that car that I didn't really have enough for him. So we come through on lap 52. The fuel light has now come on. Kislowski side by side with Hamlin for a second right on the back of Kyle Busch. So we come through into turn three on lap 53, and I, I was assuming everybody was going to come through into the pit lane here, and sure enough, pretty much everybody does except for Kyle Busch, but we come through into the pit lane now as we actually get rear-ended 
from Kevin Harvick, the 2014 Damn. champion right there. Uh, but no damage really done to the car, fortunately. So we come in for Tire Call once again, and as well as two cans of feel. And this should take us right to the end of this race. There was also some minor repairs to be made on the car, which uh, probably was about an extra second of repairs or so. Uh, but we come in, or out, right behind okay. Kislowski. But look at Denny Hamlin. He had a great pit stop compared to Kislowski. And now he is way out in front of the two cars. So we come through on lap 55. Now unlapping ourselves at this point here as we go down toward turn one down in P14. There you see Kyle Busch is coming out now. So everybody lost a ton of ground to Denny Hamlin, who is probably going to run away with the win at this point now as we exit turn two. There you see Chase Elliott now closing in very quickly on the back of myself. As we go down toward turn three, surprisingly, he's going to run the same lane as us, but the caution comes out with 13 laps to go here in Kansas, and that will force a late race restart on us now as actually you're going to see Tyler Reddick and all those drivers in front of us do not have to pit because they were on the pit lane doing their pit stop already when the caution came out. It was honestly a perfect timed caution for them because they had actually had their cars serviced and they were just getting ready to leave when that caution had come out. We were going to cycle out through past them, but now we will be restarting in the 12th position for what could be the final restart of the day here, or of the night in Kansas Speedway with Tyler Reddick now leading this race as the green flag is out and we are underway and it is only going to be nine laps to go here in Kansas. Tyler Reddick, can he hold on to his first career win? He had a chance about a handful of races ago at Richmond to pick up his first win after dominating the last couple stages and completely threw away the victory on the final restart. Now as we come through out of turn two, Harrison Burton, Kyle Larson, Bubba Wallace all up in the mix up there, but we know we have more speed than all of those cars up there, so we are just going to try and go around this outside and hopefully manage to make this work. Hamlin, he's going to get caught up behind the 38 of John Hunter Nemechek, Elliot Kozlowski, they're both moving their way through fairly quick. Quickly. Those are, of course, our biggest competitors right now as we come through to complete lap 59. Eight laps to go as we look to the outside of the 47 down towards turns one. And there you see Reddick still out front. Bowman in second. Kurt Busch up into the mix as well. He is definitely a competitor to give an eye out for. He, we know he has speed. Now as we're four wide for a moment there with Bubba Wallace, Harrison Burton, and the nine of Elliott. But we managed to get around them cleanly. Also passing Larson into turn three. And now Reddick, he would give up the lead to the one of Kurt Busch now as we're going to get right to the back of Reddick as we exit turn two. He's going to be in the way. I just, I know I can't make the bottom work, so I'm just hoping that an opportunity opens up here on the top as we push the 8 all the way past the 48 of Bowman into turn 3, and now I try to jump up a little bit higher and maybe get a run on the exit of 4 to look to the outside, but unfortunately the run stalls out there on the exit of 4. Elliot made a 3 wide with myself and Bowman. He moves up into now P3 and then out of uh, now through turn 1 and 2, I should say. Elliot will now pass Reddick for second place as we're going to be 3 wide now with Kozlowski as well as Alex Bowman down this back which I give a big push to the back of the 8 of uh, Tyler Reddick as we dive down into turn 3 and sideways goes the 8 of Reddick and he's going to save with their contact with Bowman as well and both of them make a miraculous save as we exit turn 4 moving now into P3 as we come through down the front stretch. I was just doing what I had to do he can come talk to me after the race. There you heard the quick radio transmission now as we come through out of turn two. Now Elliott on lap 63 is a side by side with Kurt Busch of Chip Ganassi Racing for the lead as Teslowski has so much speed and he's going to drive right on by me into turn three as Elliott will now take the lead as well from Kurt Busch as they exit turn four. But Kurt has the momentum to actually maintain on the outside, but it would not last long as he would get cleared by Elliott, then give up and now the second spot to Keselowski who looks to his inside. We're right up in the mix with three laps to go. Elliott clearly does not have the speed that I I had thought he was going to have here in the final few laps because now he has Keselowski up his left hand side as I look to the inside of Kurt Busch as we exit turn two and Brad Keselowski is going to steal the win potentially away from Elliott here if Elliott can not fight back as we go into turn three and sure enough Keselowski clears Elliott and we come through now out of turn four with just two laps to go coming through to the final lap here in Kansas Elliott surprisingly has not lost much time to Keselowski he is close enough to attack as we start this final lap here in Kansas Speedway as we go down into turn one pushing Kurt into the corner. The two goes to the top, the nine to the bottom, but the caution comes out here on the final lap in Kansas, and the race is official, and Brad Keselowski picks up another victory on the season now, as we're going to come home in P4 there. So, a bit unfortunate that we did not get a green flag finish, because I was really curious what was about to happen right there between Chase Elliott as well as Brad Keselowski. Good stuff tonight, guys. We put a, a great car together. We had good pit stops. And, you know, we did everything right. It's just I, I didn't quite have the car I needed right there to pull off the victory. But overall, good night.
There you heard the radio transmission after the race from myself to the team as we're going to check out the finishing order, of course, Keselowski with the victory. Bubba Wallace with the top 10. Harrison Burton there, a rookie in P12. Daniel Suarez down in 23rd. Harvick 24th. Uh, Chase Briscoe, the rookie, all the way down in 30th. Greg's in 32nd and Chastain down in 33rd. He has had some speed this season, but he just hasn't had the luck he needs. Now as we're going to go to our post-race interview with Jay Cook. Yet another top 10, Gary. That's now 14 races in a row to start this season. How long do you think this will continue? Uh, hopefully all season, Jay. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? But yeah, I mean, I did not expect to have this many in a row. Uh, I'm sure it'll come to an end at some point. All it needs uh, is some bad luck. And surprisingly, we haven't had that this season, which almost concerns me. Uh, if we go through the whole playoffs or something, I'm sure something will go wrong in Phoenix or something like that if we make the Final Four. Uh, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Kind of stretching there, just kind of a, a little bit, uh, I don't know, superstitious on that one. But uh, overall, a good day. Keselowski with another win, but uh, I'm confident we'll go to Michigan and have a solid run and hopefully another top 10, which would be really nice. But uh, the team has been so good to start this season. It's kind of unfortunate that we're not going to be back with these guys next season, but uh, I know where I'm going and uh, I can't say yet, but uh, I can tell you that uh, good things are coming for us. Uh, so I'm not concerned about that. So yeah, overall, a good night and I'm excited to, uh, for the next one here at uh, Michigan. So we'll see what we can do there. All right, there you heard the post-race interview between myself as well as Jay Cook. As always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, you do know what to do. We're going to check out the point standings after that one now as Brad Kozlowski picked up yet another victory on the season. I think that was win number two for him, if I remember correctly, this season. And in the next one, we have a truck race, so we'll have a subscriber back in the truck at Texas Motor Speedway. Then we got Michigan for both the Xfinity Series as well as the Cup Series. There you see the Xfinity Series standings on your screen. So Cindric Gilliland as well as Ross Chastain currently up all at the front there. They all have two wins apiece, and then you saw we got uh, Zane Smith in the playoffs as well, and then there you see the Cup Series standing. So Keselowski now has two wins. Four drivers this season have multiple wins, and then there you see fifth from Harvick through ninth of Bell all have one win, and down towards the bottom is Cole Custer currently holding on to that last spot in the playoffs. So that will do it, though, for this episode. Thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch, and I'll see you guys in the next one for Michigan. Have a great day, everybody.